Beatitudes, Jesus gives a lot of affirmations in Matthew chapter 5. But in verse 12, he says, Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great. I thought that I'd jump immediately to that particular scripture. Of all the things that he tells you to get in touch with and to be reconciled with, he said, for your reward in heaven is great. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So on our theme today, when we're going to look at something called, kind of like a persecution promise, and what should our posture be, or what is the posture that we have when difficulties come our way. We look at this and we keep it in perspective as we answer the question, am I in concert with how a Christian should respond during difficult times? Is my soul in agreement with God? Is my relationship with my fellow man still tight? I had a wonderful opportunity just yesterday and I was speaking with someone and I said, with all of the hocus pocus rigmarole that's happened to me over the years, I can still look in the face of every person that I've ever met and say, yes, I feel the same way. I am satisfied with what Christ means to me. Now I want to give you secondary introductory scripture. We're just going to glance at it. Psalms chapter 1 verse 1. Go there with me. Psalms 1 and 1. First verse in the book of Psalms. It says, How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. Now let's look at this. How blessed is that man? See, you can't be satisfied if you're not living right. There will be no satisfaction if there's unconfessed sin in our lives. There will be no consistency of Christian happiness if we are not doing what God would tell us to do. Now, as I look at Psalms 1 and 1, how blessed is man, uh, you know, this blessed means uh, how set apart. I like it in the sense of what Jesus says, great is my reward in heaven when I'm satisfied. But the secondary introductory scripture would be found in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Let's go back there. Go back to the New Testament. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. And there's a reason that I'm having you jump around, and you'll see it in a minute. Okay, here we are. It says, no one can serve two masters, Jesus says. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. So the things that we are coming up against in our society today is maybe not persecution like the Christians in uh, Indochina is going through. Probably not the persecution that the Christians are going through in Africa, starving to death. There's a different kind of persecution that comes our way. We think that we are persecuted if we don't have the material things that supposedly is supposed to give us life and happiness and all of these worldly pursuits. Now, very few Christians can meet in a room the way you're meeting in mm -hmm. and have a discussion mm -hmm. about God mm -hmm. without feeling a sense of loss. Right. You know, they have to adorn themselves with the frills of life all around them instead of adorning themselves simply with the simple word of God. Amen. So, if indeed I am that satisfied Christian, there shall be no complaint coming from me concerning the outcome of my Christian witness. God, this is wonderful. Because I was just yesterday I found myself having these words with the people that I was with, that I was sharing the weekend with. And I said, my witness is the same wherever and whomever I'm with in any circumstance, in any place. My witness never changes. I'm satisfied with my position. And you know what? I, I, I'll okay. tell you that the older you get in Christ, mm -hmm. the more sustained you become as you go through life's journeys, point after point. 
I expect to receive persecution in that the message that I give is from Christ in heaven. Everyone will not agree with it. Everyone will not agree with me, with my stance, with my modus operandi, with the way garland in which I do my life. Mm -hmm. So I tell them, you figure out how you're going to do yours. Because it is in that figuring of how you're going to do your life. Come on in, the door is open. It's in that figuring with how you're going to do your life that you will be sustained in your Christian witness. That is the way that happens. That is the way that happens. So that's what I want you to do. I do not expect those who have no connection. And listen to this. Listen to this. When you find individuals that have no connection with heaven, no connection with Christ, no connection with God, yeah. they cannot respond the way a believer responds. No. They may try to do it. They may feign it. They may go through the motions. Mm -hmm. That's why. That's why you know I like the way. And then the folk that view us over the internet. I like the way we are at Anselm. We dress down. The pastor doesn't have to look like, dress like, sound like, speak like some rhetorical person that has no connection with the heavens. But rather, speak as if he has had a relationship with God and that relationship sustains him. Yeah, yeah. You notice I didn't say her. <laughs> Let's just keep it real. Amen. If it is a pastor, it's not a her, it's a him. Amen. Now, you got the church today that would say, oh, oh, I believe that I'm satisfied. My mama's a pastor. No, she's not. She's a fraud. And you have placed her in that position because you feel good. I've lost some viewers already, but that's okay. I expect to receive persecution in that the message of Christ is from heaven and not from earth. See, just by making the statement about a female not being a pastor, I will receive persecution. I don't expect those who have no connection with heaven to enjoy the themes of the life that I enjoy, that I find myself relishing in comprehensively, even in the face of all those things that have once marred my relationship with other people in the faith, I still have the ability to go on and on and on because Christ has sustained me and satisfied me in my Christianity throughout my years. I don't falter because things get rough. When things get rough, I just change clothes. I try to find some clean ones. Just try to keep on moving. You know, that's all I'm trying to do, move through time. I'm not trying to be anything special. I must come to the point of facing the journey that God has placed me in, in the midst of all of the madness that all you other folk are into. And each of us have our own journey, our own madness. Mm -hmm. My daughter was here from Chicago and she got on a plane yesterday and flew back and she says, Daddy, we must talk. I said, then call and talk. But it's not going to change me. It's not going to change the way I do life. It's not going to change anything that you think about me. Why? Because I'm satisfied in my sainthood. You understand? Mm -hmm. See, when you come to that point, no one, no person, no family member, no loved one can take you out of that relationship. Now, what should my attitude be through all of this? Well, we see it in Matthew chapter 5, verse 12, and we're just going to look at the first part of that verse. Re Jesus says, rejoice and be glad. What should my attitude be? Rejoice and be glad. I know, Garland, they can't be glad because they're looking at what other people have. How can I be glad if I'm losing my home? Those that view over the YouTube thing, yeah, you're going to lose the home. You're supposed to lose.